Hey guys, this is Obadiah here, coming at you with another TRP3 Extended video today, where today I want to show you a tutorial of how to create a new item that I will be showcasing inside this video. Obadiah has returned to Duskwood, where he's currently hunting, and has just killed a wolf and collected its pelt and eat. He's pretty thirsty. He'd like a way to collect water. So for today, we're going to create an item that will allow us to walk up to any water source and fill it. It will be a water canteen. That we can later drink, rehydrate our character. Let's go ahead and open up our database. Let's go ahead and create a new item. We're going to call this an expert item. We can call this water canteen. And we can even set a rarity. We can set a tooltip. And this is what our item looks like so far. Let's go ahead and add a description. Something like that, this means fine. I can give it a price value up here, one silver, as well as a weight in grams. Furthermore, I just want this item to be soul bound, rather it be unique, so I only have one of them in my inventory, and I want it to be usable. And I can even customize the usage text to say, right click me. This is what our item looks like. Awesome, now let's find a water canteen image. We have a lot to choose from, and it looks like there are water canteens that are filled and then ones that are not filled. So this brings up an interesting question of how do we create an item that you can right click to fill and right click to drink and will correspond with the correct image of an item being filled or empty. Currently, TRP3, I don't think, allows me to change the image of an item on its own. So what we'll have to do is work a little bit of TRP3 magic and actually create two items that are very similar to one another. A canteen that's full and a canteen that's empty. So you know what? I'm going to start off with the canteen that's empty first. So this usage text will say, right-click, fill. Awesome. Finally, let's just give this a bag sound effect. Let's just hit save for right now. Awesome. So we want our item to be able to be usable. Made it so by checking that little checkbox. But when we add it to our inventory and right click it, it says cannot find workflow on use. So that's telling you is that you haven't made a workflow that's been linked to the on use event link. That means is there's this tab over here called event links and when you right click the item this is what it'll be uh, running it'll run whatever you put right here under the on use currently we don't have any workflows to link that's why we're getting an error so in just a second we'll be starting to make a workflow but first what i want to do is make a second item that's just like this one but that will be the full version of our canteen now then I could just add a new item in my database, or I could try to organize this a little bit more. To organize it a little bit more, let's create an inner object within my water canteen. We can add copy of existing object because it'll be very similar to our previous one. And we'll call this canteen full. This is the uh, uh, unique ID for the object, not the actual name itself. Let's filter to find our water canteen to make a copy from it. And here we go. If we click on this, it's basically the exact same item. I want to change a few things though. First, this is going to be our full one. So we want to say right click to drink. Drink. Leave it at that. Furthermore, we want to change the image to be the full water flask. Excellent. This looks exactly the same except for the usage text and the image. And I can go back between two items up here by clicking on these buttons. Let's start off with the empty canteen. Let's create a workflow on fill. And you can name the workflow whatever you'd like. So first what I would like to do is I'd like to add a delay. What delays can do is they can pause the workflow that you're currently working in for a certain amount of seconds or you can select the second option 
which is a cast, which will also do a pause in the workflow, but show a graphic change for doing so. It'll show a little bar with a little cast time on it and some casting text. You can even play a sound as well. For our casting text today, it'll say filling. So I want our player to take some time to have to fill the canteen. And for interruption, I want this to be interruptible when he moves. So if I move during this, it's going to cancel the workflow. Next, I'm going to go into inventory. I'm going to say destroy item. I want to get rid of the empty canteen, and I want to add the full canteen. So we browse the water canteen, and I know the empty one is this first one, because it's the parent object. Second thing I want to do is I would like to add full canteen, which is this one right here. That's it. If I right click this guy now, oops, you'll see I still have cannot find workflow on use, and that's because I didn't link the item, the event links. So go over to the event links, go to on use, and then link your workflow that you just made. Now if you right click it, it should give you a filling, and it adds the other water canteen. Now if I click the other water canteen, it also has the same issue. And that's because our full canteen doesn't have any workflows, or does it have any on use events linked. So, go ahead, and we can actually possibly take a step shorter and let's copy the workflow content of our empty canteen flask then go into our full canteen flask and create a new workflow called on use drink let's go ahead and paste our workflow content that takes whatever was in our previous workflow content and puts it into this one we want it to be similar but not quite the same so this one it'll be drinking dot 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 this time we want to destroy the full one, this one that has a parent and a child item, and we want to add the one that's empty. Go over to event links, link the workflow on use drink. Save. Now if we use the full one, say drinking, and it'll add the empty flask. Excellent. Well, this is just dandy, you know, Elbudaya now has a, a canteen that he can drink whenever he wants, and he can also fill it whenever he wants. Well, that doesn't seem quite right. We want it only to be fillable when he's in the water. Let's say when he's submerged or swimming, like this. Let's go ahead and just get this item ready in the empty position, because we're going to change a few things for the parent item, the empty canteen. Go back into our workflow. Let's add a new element called a condition, the middle one. You see here the condition pops up a window, and we'll get to this in just a second. I want you to X out of it real quick, and I just want to describe what the condition does. So at this point, the condition is step four in the workflow. When step four is met in the workflow, it'll basically evaluate a condition. Currently, it's seeing if the target that I currently have targeted, if their name is equal to Elsa. If the target's name is equal to Elsa, then this workflow will continue on. However, you can see there's no other workflow to continue on to. What we want is we want this condition to evaluate whether or not we're in the water at the very beginning, before it even starts. Let's move it up to the very top. Let's click on it, and let's describe the rest of this window now. So this is the condition test, the actual conditional statement that it will evaluate when this step is met. A failure message that'll say, a message across the screen if the condition is not met, and you can even run a workflow once the condition is failed. Let's go ahead and just click this first condition and let's change it. Let's go to character. Character is swimming. Let's go ahead is equal to and let's set it to a boolean value. Boolean values just mean if something is true or not in coding terms. It's true. But right now if I go to preview value says false. So if I preview test, it'll say false. Now if I back up on my character a little bit, preview test, it says true. Let's confirm. And then let's add a failure message that says you are not in a body of water. So let's just say near. Excellent. Save. So now if I right click this outside, it should say I'm not in a body of water. Great. From inside, it should progress with the workflow. Perfect. Now with the full canteen, I wanted the full canteen to be usable anywhere. 
and it still is. That's because in the full canteen, its workflow doesn't have any conditions. Awesome. Now, let's say that Obadiah flies back onto Duskwood. I'm sorry, Darkshire. And let's say there's a sink or a bucket, some source of water that Obadiah can use as a water source. But it's not deep enough or you cannot submerge yourself in that source. Well, that proposes, uh, proposes a unique problem because you need to be submerged for that condition to work. Let's look, open up our database and go back into our empty workflow. Sorry, our empty canteen workflow, and let's look at our condition. We add a test, it brings up two different conditionals. So here it says this condition and this condition. So both these conditions would have to be true for the condition to proceed forward with the workflow. If we change this to or, it just means either one of them has to be true. Let's click on the second one. If we go down into unit value, go all the way down to unit point distance. Let's click on this. What this does is this measures a distance from a pre-recorded x and y coordinates between that coordinate and the x and y coordinates of where you are currently. If I select the player unit type, this will measure the distance between the player and this x and y coordinate right here. can't see it currently, but I'm currently sitting right in the middle of the fountain. And I want to use this x and y coordinate as a potential spot to fill my water canteen. So if I use this, it'll save this position right here. And this will be the point that it's measuring the distance from. Say confirm. Now if I back up a little bit from this fountain, I say preview value, I'm a distance of about nine. I don't know if this is feet or meters technically, but if I get closer to the fountain, say preview value, I'm now down to less than one. You can see I can create a, a, a radius, a circle essentially around this fountain that if I'm within that radius, I can use this item. And if I'm outside the radius, I can't. So if I change this comparison to less than or equal to, and let's change it to a numeric value, and let's just say two for right now. I can now preview the test and see at which point it says I can't measure it. And it looks like it's right outside. So I have that to be like standing inside the uh, fountain. So I'm gonna change it actually to three, just for convenience sake. Confirm, confirm, save. So now if I'm over here in the town and try right clicking my item, I can't, can't fill it. But if I go up to the fountain now, I can fill it. So today you learned how to create an item that can change the usage text, the image of it, and learn the power of TRP3 with a little bit of TRP3 magic and creating an item that you can use and refill. Furthermore, you learn the power of conditional statements and also the utility of using a point distance function that measures the distance between a pre-recorded area and your character. These ideas that I taught you today have plenty of implications for future creativity of uh, items. For example, Obadiah previously has created an alchemy profession where there were a bunch of empty vials that you had to fill up with liquids. Some liquid would be water, so he would just go by to the near lake. Other liquids included moonwell water, so I recorded where moonwells were in uh, the world of Azeroth, and you had to be within a certain amount of uh, distance between those moonwells to right-click the vial to fill them up to get moonwell water. Furthermore, you can just make certain areas interactive with the point distance um, function. So I can turn a simple pot, let's say, that's inside a, a building into an interactive pot where a player can search inside of it and maybe they get money out of it or an herb or some sort of resource. Um, furthermore, you can just change entire blacksmiths into being interactable. I could make that anvil interactive. If I save the point distance of that anvil and made it so that if you right-clicked an item next to it, it would make it interactable. So TRP3 can be a very powerful tool in making your world interactive. You just have to spend the time imagining creative ways to use it, and then just seeing what comes out as a result and making sure you learn from it every time.
Anyways, that's all for today. Make sure to drop a comment and let me know what you guys want to see created in the future. And I'll see you guys next time.